Hey again, guys. Um, I'm here to, again to read The Wild Robot, and today we're on Chapter 17. Chapter 17, The Camouflaged Insect. Roz was a mess. She lay under the tree, covered in a heap of broken branches and pine cones and needles. She still hadn't removed the sticky resin from her body. And then there was the bird droppings. She was about to get up and give herself a rigorous cleaning when she noticed a peculiar twig. The twig was moving. It was crawling along one of the broken branches on the ground. With a gentle touch, the robot picked up the twig. Hello, stick insect. My name is Roz. You are very well camouflaged. The stick's insect body was long and thin. He had the same shape and colors and markings of the, as a real twig. But if you looked closely, you just might see two tiny eyes and two spindly antennae. The insect didn't make a sound and he sat perfectly still. As still as the robot, the two of them sat still and silently stared at each other for a while. Thank you, stick insect, said Roz as she placed him back to where she found him. You have taught me an important lesson. I can see how camouflage helps you survive. Perhaps it could help me survive also. Chapter 18, The Camouflaged Robot. As you know, reader, Roz has always liked to keep to herself as clean as possible, but her desire to stay alive was stronger than her desire to stay clean, and our robot decided it was time she got dirty. Roz was going to camouflage herself. She got the idea from the stick insect, but Roz quickly realized that camouflaging herself as a twig was out of the question. No, the robot would have to blend into the landscape itself. She began by smearing handfuls of thick mud over her entire body. Then she plucked ferns and grasses from the ground and sank their roots into her muddy coating. She placed colorful flowers around her face to disguise her glowing eyes, and any bare patches were covered with tree leaves and strips of moss. Our robot now looked like a great tuft of plants walking through the forest. She waited for darkness, and then she padded to the center of a clearing, nestled herself between some rocks, and became part of the landscape. And there she is. She did a really good job of camouflaging herself, didn't she? A few hours later, the sky was brightening, the fog was lifting, and the nighttime animals were sl slinking home. And the daytime animals were beginning to stir. It was just an ordinary morning on the island. However, there was that new tuft of plants in that one forest clearing. Only the bees had noticed the tuft. They buzzed around it, completely unaware that the robot was hidden beneath. And so Roz sat there, right in the open yet completely unseen, and observed the wilderness around her. She watched flowers slowly turn toward the sun. She listened, listened to rodents crawl through the weeds. She smelled the moist, piney air. She felt worms wiggle against her muddy sides. A week later, the tuft of plants was gone, but there was a new clump of seaweed on the shore. A week after that, a clump of seaweed was gone, but there was a new bramble on the mountain. Then there was a new log on the riverbank. Then a new rock in the forest. Chapter 19, The Observations. Clouds scudded through the sky. Spiders spun intricate webs. Berries beckoned to hungry mouths. Foxes stalked hares. Mushrooms rose up from their leaf litter. Turtles plopped into ponds. Moss spread across tree roots. Vultures hu hunched over carcasses. Ocean waves beat against the coastline. Tadpoles became frogs and caterpillars became butterflies. A camouflaged robot observed it all. Chapter 20, The Language of the Animals. It started with the birds. They had always been skittish when the robot was near. They would stare and screech and then scatter. But now that Roz was camouflaged, she could secretly observe their normal behavior right up close. Roz noticed chickadees fluttering through the same flowers and singing the same song every morning. She noticed a lark who swooped down to the same rock and sang the same song every morning or afternoon. She noticed the same two magpies singing to each other from across the same meadow every evening. Every week of robotically studying the animals, Roz knew what each bird would sing, and when they would sing, and eventually why they would sing. This robot was beginning to understand the birds.
But she also was beginning to understand the porcupines and the salamanders and the beetles. She discovered that all the different animals shared one common language. They just spoke the language in different ways. You might see, say each species spoke with its own unique accent. When Roz first listened to the chickadees, their songs had sounded like tweedle, tweedle, tweedle. But now the chickadees sang. Roz heard, oh, what a lovely day it is. Oh, what a lovely day it is. Deer spoke mostly with their bodies. By simply turning her head, a doe could say to her family, let's look for clovers by the stream. Snakes often hiss to themselves things like, I know there's a tasty mouse around here somewhere. Bees said very little. They used their wings to buzz a few simple words like nectar and sun and hive. Frogs spent much of their time searching for each other. One would croak, where are you? I can't see you. And then another one would reply, I'm over here. Follow my voice. When Roz first stomped across the island, the animal squawks and growls and chirps had sounded like nothing more than meaningless noise. But she no longer heard animal noises. Now she heard animal words. Here's a picture of the bird. Chapter 21, The Introduction. There was an hour each morning in the dim light of dawn when all the island animals were safe. You see, long ago, they had agreed not to hunt or harm one another during that hour. They called it the dawn truce. Most mornings, the island residents would gather in the great meadow and spend an hour chatting with their friends. The bears had never made an appearance, and the vultures just circled high above. But on this particular morning, an unusually large group of animals had come out to discuss some important news. Settle down, everyone. I have something to say, Swooper the Owl hooted to the crowd from the lowest branch of a dead tree. Last night, I saw a mysterious creature right here in the great meadow. It seemed to be covered in grass, so I couldn't get a good look at it. But I think it may have been the monster. Looks of concern spread over the crowd. What was the creature doing? said the dart, dart the weasel. It was speaking, said Sweeper. It kept repeating the same words over and over again, but each time it sounded a little different. At first, it sounded like a cricket. Then it sounded like a raccoon. And then it sounded like an owl. What was it saying, said Ding Down the groundhog. I could be mistaken, said Sweeper, but I think it was saying, hello, my name is Roz. The crowd began to chatter. Just where was this creature, said Fink the fox. Everyone turned as the owl slowly pointed his wing to a grassy lump in the meadow. It was a rather ordinary looking grassy lump until it began to move. As you probably guessed, the grassy lump was Roz. She had been there the whole time, camouflage, watching and listening, with, and with all the animals looking at her, she decided to introduce herself. The crowd stared in disbelief as the grassy lump started shaking and bulging forward and crumpling apart. And there was the robot. Then using her body and voice, the robot spoke to the animals in their own language. Hello, my name is Roz. The crowd gasped. Swooper flu fluttered up from his branch and screeched, it's the monster. I am not a monster, said Roz. I am a robot. A flock of sparrows suddenly took off. Leave us alone, squeaked Dart as he crouched low in the grass. Return to whatever horrible place you've come from. I come from here, said Roz. I have spent my whole life on this island. Why haven't you spoke to us sooner, screeched the owl from higher up in the tree. I did not know the animal language until now, said the robot. Crown Point, the buck, had heard enough, and he slipped from into the forest with his family. So what do you want from us, growled Fink. I have observed the different animals and have different that they have different ways of surviving, said the robot. I would like each of you to teach me your survival techniques. I'm not going to help you, screeched the owl from the very top of the tree. You seem so unnatural. The monster just kept waiting. It, the monster is just waiting to gobble us up, shrieked Dig, Dig Down, and the groundhog disappeared into a hole. I will not gobble anyone up, said Roz. I have no need for food. You don't need food, Fink relaxed a bit. Well, I need food and lots of it. Why don't you make yourself useful and go find me some food? What would you like me to do, said Roz. 
Can you hunt? The, fowl, the fox smiled as the hare on the far side of the gathering. It's almost time for breakfast. I cannot hunt, but I can gather some berries. The fox smile disappeared. Berries. I'm hungry for meat, not berries. Good luck to you, Roz. You're going to need it. And the fox trotted away. Roz looked up at the tree, but the owl had gone. And when the robot looked down again, she realized that everyone else had gone too. There she is. Sad. She feels kind of lonely, doesn't she? Stay tuned next time and we'll read some more, okay? Have a good day.